Close to 90% of Idaho is in a drought right now, and our exploding population is putting even more demand on our water supply. Adding further concern, the state's drought plan last updated nearly two decades ago. Since the early 2000s, we haven't had that kind of deep level of drought. And so there's been a lot of talk about updating the plan. Because that plan sets the framework for future decisions managing Idaho's water supply and its storage. And if this dry trend continues, water managers are eyeing next year's water supply with deep concern. CBS 2's Sarah Jacobson investigates what they're doing to address Idaho's water woes that could directly impact you. Overall, Idaho's doing fairly well. This is a La Nina year. And southern oscillations drive climate patterns. Southern oscillations are a recurring climate pattern involving changes in the temperatures of waters in the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean, commonly known as El Nino, La Nina, or Enso Neutral. In a typical La Nina year, the northwestern United States gets the brunt of seasonal precipitation. Meanwhile, the southwest gets shortchanged. David Hokema is a hydrologist with the Idaho Department of Water Resources and the state drought coordinator. He tells me that is exactly what has played out this water year. Although this La Nina has progressed maybe a little further north than typical, and so southern Idaho is on the dry side. And continuing to dry out week by week. This is a look at the Idaho drought monitor last month, this week, and today. Currently, 88% of the state is considered abnormally dry, while over 47% is in moderate drought. But Hokema tells me that isn't cause for panic when it comes to our water supply. Overall, our water supply is just a little below average, which most systems are set up for an average or below average situation. Carryover from previous years, he tells me, is what's helping our situation. Drought develops over time, and that's what Hokema and his team work to track and understand. But he tells me the big lost, big wood, and little wood basins continue to come up short. These three basins are kind of the center of the long-term drought in the state. Last year, everywhere in the state kind of recovered except these three basins. The soils in those regions are dry, and with little snowpack, the Northwest River Forecast Center is forecasting the lowest historical runoff in the Big Lost since monitoring began. And you can really see some of those sites are hitting record lows, and so a lot of concern for that area. Both state and local entities are working to alleviate those concerns, but it takes time. The Big Lost River Irrigation District has mm -hmm. developed a number of pits where in wet years, they j just fill these pits up with surface water, especially in the wintertime when irrigation's not being used. And then it infiltrates down into the aquifer and refills the aquifer, allowing for better conveyance of the river through the system. Statewide, this is the main method for mitigating water shortages, and Hokema tells me the data supports its benefits for the big lost. The groundwater efforts they've done have really bolstered um, groundwater levels in that area, so they shouldn't have an issue this year, but we could really see the aquifer decline drastically this year. Sarah Jacobson, CBS 2 News. With the weather heating up for summer, the Idaho Department of Land wants you to take some extra precautions in hot, dry weather.